Welcome back. I've been working on my entrances for Ranching Sodak. I watched a lot of Kramer, how Kramer used to come in the door. I would open the door and that's what I should do is set it up with the door right there, the shop. Anyways, folks, I tell you guys every day, I'm gonna do this and this and this. And then how many times do you think I get most of that list checked off? Hardly never. Today, I'm doing the stuff I was supposed to do yesterday towards the middle of the day. First off, we gotta go pull up that wire. This thing, if you remember, I used this as a hitch pin in the creep feeder. Clip is right now. Bing bong. Anyways, it was bent. I had to go out to the creep feeder with the side grinder and cut it off. But since I had it cut off, I was gonna redo it. And here's what I did, is I lengthened it. I put a little washer here so it won't go sink into the ground so far. And then I added this little guy on here. So now, when you got your spool on, see the pipe, the pipe's not spinning. It's just inside the rod so I can, I'm not having to try to lightly hold that when I'm winding it up. But here's the problem. It was just a piece of crap, scrap I found in my weld, it catches on there. So now I gotta take the side grinder and cut this off and then cut this out of there because I got everything all welded. So we're kind of trapped. Then we're gonna go move the wire. We are gonna do that. The chores are done after dinner. I did the chores. So we're doing the wire. We're moving the freaking cows. I'm sick of feeding them. We're getting them moved over there. made it a little bit taller too so I don't have to bend over as much got the sonoma out for some fencing the doggos are loaded was loaded load load up back to loaded it froze last night and it's like trying to thaw again so i can't wait <clears throat> we're gonna move them cows we built a new fence over there last fall and I didn't build any gates. And I'll show you what we do on them hot fences. And actually I'm not even gonna energize the perimeter fence because it's the cows, there's no reason for them to go up against the fence. There's they don't bother it. So the fence will be a high tensile, but it's gonna be dead. And I use this rope, which is like for horses, horse fencing. It's pretty thick. Instead of like braided rope or braided poly wire. So this would be my gate. I put one handle on each side of the fence or on each side of the gate. So you just, you can take the thing off in the off season, put it in the shed, or uh, you don't have to worry about that gate laying out on the fence or in the field. An insulator like this, I'll screw an insulator to the post. I'll put a chain link, a couple chain links in here and uh, that'll hook right on. I'll try to get, uh, get them trapped over here along this fence. the new fence has got to just run straight from here to there and not go up to where that uh, corner post is. Hopefully I can just sit in the pickup here and drive right alongside. I had a comment, a viewer that says, what, you ever think about a ranger? Well, yeah, it'd be nice. They're $30,000, I paid $600 for this pickup four years ago. Put about $80 worth of repairs in it. And uh, it's like a small ranger kind of, I, I don't know. I just can't see it. I don't understand how you can pay that kind of money for one. But teach their own. Time lapse. Maiden voyage for the new wire winder. Ooh, it's already a lot taller. So we're just gonna pull this. Come to Papa. Good. 
Good night. Now we'll go run it out. Pop a few posts in. There's a couple, there's probably one trailer load of alfalfa bales out here that I'll have to come back with the Merlot in that trailer and pick them up. I don't want them eating those. Still got the cows tricked. We'll go hook that up. Remember last time when we were having troubles with that rope was getting tight in the spools? Well, I got another spool underneath that one. We'll see if that gives it like a extra little, uh, almost like a bearing, kind of making a pull easier. It's either gonna work or it's gonna cause a big problem with that other one too. Keep an eye on her. I'll put some posts in here with you. Five oh five oh, that's good. Bet you guys tricked into this corner, eh? Mm. Yeah, the gate's up over there, but their eyes lead their feet. Next thing is the gates. Got to go fiddle with those gates, and then we got to come back with the Merlot in that hay trailer and get those alfalfa bales out of here. And then we'll let the cows start plowing some corn, huh? What a mess. The only good thing is, is it's early enough. It's in February that we get them in here, and they're gonna make a mud mess, and they're gonna rough it all up. But if I get them out of here and we can let the frost set in and thaw and set in and thaw, that'll break that soil back down. And then we'll hit this thing with the super coulter this spring when we're gonna plant, hopefully two times with the super coulter and we can get this back to fairly smooth. I disked everything last year, which was, I mean, whatever. It was pretty bad, but I should have never did that. I should have just super coultered it and planted the corn again. So I'm done disking. It just makes a mess of the soil. I'm gonna put one of these on the post. Other ways, I did put a chain link in here. onto here. That's money, dude. I just put a post in the middle there too for temporary or whatever so that people can see it too with a pickup if somebody comes driving in here. But anyway, pretty quick gate. It works good because you got springs on both sides. So you, you got extra spring tension on your, on your rope. And then what we'll do is I, I run underground wire. If I was to energize this, I'll run underground wire through here because this is dead. The insulators are here because of these pipes. So this actually part of the fence is dead. So I take underground, hook it to here, run it through my pipe here like this. And then I come out here and I hook it to this chain. So then this is hot, this is hot and keeps the keeps it going. Like I said, I'm not even going to turn this on or worry about juice on this outside fence here cuz there's no reason for these cows to be wanting to come this way anyway. I got the other gate built. I'm going to go home now. 
and uh, I had forgotten about that dang hay trailer that we wrecked the other day. When I say we, I mean you and me. So I'm going to have to weld that, patch that up a little bit, and then I'll pull it over to the GMs, hook it up to the Merlot, come over here, and get those alfalfa bales. The cows can actually get out here now, but they're trapped in that corner because they're just being stupid or whatever. So when we're here with the Merlot, I'll drive down to that end and get them to come in here, and then they should be good to go. Kari's home. She brought me a half, six inches of Jimmy John's. Yummy! All right, we gotta weld this trailer up. I think Dane is in the back building mats again. We gotta drag the welder out and fix this menagerie on this trailer. I have a long cord for my welder, so I can extension cord, I can plug it in and then drag it out here. Quick word from our sponsor, DF Cattle Mats. We got these non-slip cattle mats. If you haven't seen the channel before, you probably don't know what they are, but this is what they are. They're used tires, I weave them together and put stainless steel bolts around the edges with big washers on them so they don't rip double bolt everything, triple bolts on the corner. They're literally tires and stainless steel, so it's gonna last forever. What we use them for is we'll put them in front of our cattle chutes, we'll put them in our working tubs. Now I just started building some uh, Cobat water tank mats. So they are 10 by 10, 31 inch hole in the middle, and they slip right over these Cobat water tanks. They're, the Cobats are geothermal tanks that basically stay open in most conditions and there's geothermal heat that comes up through a tube in the bottom that's insulated, keeps that bowl open, but they work really good. A lot of guys are starting to buy them. Anyway, I just hauled a pretty good sized load of those Cobets out to KMAC Ranch Supply, or KMAC Ranch Supply out in Union Center. So they got them there. If you're interested, go check those guys out. They got a website and Facebook, but also I'll link my website down below. And if you are a cattle rancher and you wanna try one of these out, Give me a shout on there, give me a call, my number's on there. So let me know, I can build custom size for anything pretty much. I mean, you dream it up, I can build it. So that's what they are and that's what I've been doing. Back to your pre-prayed programming. <laughs> pre-prayed? This load- Wow, I can about oh. apologize for that guys. Oh. That really got into our ranching here. Oh. Okay, what's this up? This load I'm building the 24 standard six and a half by six and a half. These are gonna go down to a guy in Western Nebraska He's going to be putting them down his fence line bunks, which we hadn't thought of until a guy started doing it out by Roscoe, South Dakota. And he really liked it. And now I'm kind of promoting that. So if you've got fence line bucks and, and you're in a dry lot, these things will work awesome. They're going to keep your cows up out of the mud. You put them right along the bunk. You can chain them together if you want, but they work pretty good, even not chained together. And it beats the crap out of concrete. They're not going to slip on these. The mud will settle through them. They'll settle right up on top of the mud and your calves aren't gonna have to stand in knee deep mud when they're eating your silage and you're trying to feed them, put weight on them, just extra stress. These things are gonna help you out. Back to your pre-pray programming. Pre-pray. Wow, that was pretty intense commercial. Uh, I kind of like those Cialis commercials better, just for comic relief, basically, right? Okie dokie, let's get that welder out. <laughs> Alright, so this needs to be hoisted back up and hooked to here. This first two are broken, and then this bar here, that went across the top. As you can see before, it was a pretty sketchy job. I'll try to do a little better this time.
Well, I'm sure that was hard for some of you to watch if you're any, if any of you are certified welders or professional welders. Um, some of my antics are a little sketchy at best, but uh, yeah, we got her hooked back together and I think she'll hold for now. Let's go over and get that Merlot. All right, I got the wagon hooked up. I'm gonna head over and grab those bales, see what the cows are doing, if they've figured it out yet, or still trapped in the corner. Red cow sale, Hub City right now. I just listened to Broken Mouth Cows brought two, what they bring, $2,135 for some 1,500 pound Broken Mouth Cows. Crazy stuff. Well, we made her over here. Um, I think there's more than one load for these bales, so fill her up once and see what see what we got left. Kind of go from there. Some of them would probably be okay, but we lost that cow over there. I don't want to keep any alfalfa bales here. I decided they're a little smaller because I had planned on just letting them eat them, but the bales are smaller. I'll put you in the tree so you can uh, watch me from over here. Well, I'm gonna cruise over here to this corner and lure them back out here. But they definitely plowed this sucker. This one not as bad as the one before, but this one, of course, they gotta walk across it to go back over to the trees, so it's a little bit more traffic. But we'll run the super coulter over it. Like I say, it's good to graze it now, get them done with it, and then let the frost and the thawing happen when they're not here. And then we can, after it's all dried up, we can hit her with the super coulter a couple times. And get her leveled back out. It's not ideal, don't get me wrong, it's not, I wish it was all frozen, but what do you do? Well, they didn't want to cross that little creek there, so I had to go down where it was narrower. Now I'm sure they'll all start crossing the wide stuff where they, you know, the shorter distance, but pretty hard convincing to come out here when there's nothing going on. Get one to go, you can get them all to go. There is a slough over here. My guess is once they get over here and start eating and then they find that slough, they won't have to go back through there for water. Well, they're coming now. They'll be happy once they get over to the corn and the hay. Once they realize the wire's gone, then they like, oh, it's all come alive. Come alive. Let's not start eating corn at the thing. Let's run across the whole field to the far side and then, oh, they pretty much stop and start eating. Oh, she's open, boys. Well, there we go. What I wanted to do three days ago or uh, four days ago, but, I do like it now that it is cold and it is at least holding me up, holding the cows up. They'll churn her up, I'm sure, but. I got all these bales. I think there's about 300 bales over there, give or take. This should be, this should be the last move to the 1st of March. I mean, it should give me 20 days of feed. I got this patch of corn and then there's one more patch of corn on the other side of that fence we put up today. So. We'll give them this. That'll make them stand here for a week, eat bales. Once they get the bales gnawed down a ways, then we'll pop the fence open for that last bit over there. They'll have the corn from over there. And then we'll just keep feeding them silage, um, the silage until they get all this bales cleaned up. This is all rough hay, so they, they need protein once the corn's gone. And then we'll just supplement them with silage and uh, they'll finish cleaning all this up. And hopefully, hopefully by then it's, we're into March a little bit. I'm gonna grab these bales here, finish filling the rack, see what I can do. And then I know there's three or four bales up by the gate and uh, we might just set those out on the approach. Well, I'm gonna send you off. I got them moved finally. 
they're on to all these bales. So we got a lot of hay up on this hill. We're getting these alfalfa bales out of here. They're all settled into the corn. Thanks for tuning in. If you want to buy some meat, we got something cooking here. Go check out Farmer Grade. Let's start with that. Go check out Farmer Grade. Me and Sawyer are conjuring up a little bit of a plan here for a little American Wagyu for you viewers. Cows look good. They're happy. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one.